I think that Amazon.com, if we don't, if we're not one of those important, lasting companies born of the internet, we will have nobody to blame but ourselves and that we will be extremely disappointed in ourselves. But there are no guarantees. As we gear up for Christmas, people will be buying a lot of their gifts on Amazon.com, making Jeff Bezos the real life Santa Claus of the 21st century. I can't believe Kenny bailed on us just because he thinks Jeff Bezos is a bad guy. Yeah, how can somebody who gives you whatever you want be a bad guy? No, Jeff Bezos, he doesn't live at the North Pole, but he could likely buy an entire continent if he saw fit. Now, instead, he likes to scoop up properties throughout the United States and is said to be the 25th largest landowner in all of the US. He's got homes in Washington, Washington, D.C., Texas, Beverly Hills, and of course, New York City. You're getting an exclusive look inside Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' brand new penthouse. He's also got an assortment of million dollar cars, including his Ferrari, Pininfarina, Sergio, a Bugatti Veyron Mansory, a W Motors Lycan Hypersport, a Conan Tag CCXR Trevita, a Lamborghini Veneno. Yikes, sorry if I butchered any of the names of those cars. If you're not new to this channel, well, that's kind of how it goes here. Now, these are all recent purchases with him having been said to be still driving a 1996 Honda Accord as recent as 2013. What's with the Honda? <laughs> this is a perfectly good car. <laughs> Nowadays, he likes to kick up his feet in his very own $65 million Gulfstream G650 ER private jet. But don't worry, he's also got some flying perks for the rest of us, like his experimental initiative called Amazon Prime Air, where he uses drones to provide delivery services to his eager customers. I mean, the guy ain't doing bad for a dude who once upon a time he worked at McDonald's. Now, Jeff Bezos, he was the first person in modern history to accumulate a fortune of over $100 billion and is estimated to be worth anywhere between $110 and $150 billion at the time of this recording. Bezos has earned the same $81,840 salary from Amazon since 1997, but it's his shares that have made him one of, if not the richest man in the world, with him having earned as much as $260 million in a single day. Now, some online experts, they did the maths, and what a dollar means to the average American is equal to $88,000 for Mr. Jeff Bezos. I mean, the dude is so rich, he was actually able to buy himself a walk-on role in Star Trek Beyond. Speak normally. Yeah, that's him with the long head saying, speak normally. Now, Bezos, he called this a bucket list situation, which I can actually relate to. I grew up obsessed with Dumb and Dumber, and then I got a background role in the sequel. Sure, the movie wasn't great, but I was there with Jim Carrey. Manifestation people, it truly works. Now, Amazon is diversified in so many ways. There's Amazon Prime, which is competing with Netflix. There's Twitch, which is competing with YouTube. They own weird things like imdb.com, Audible, Whole Foods, and more. Now, sadly, with all the money in the world, well, he couldn't save his receding hairline. Ah, oh, damn, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCredden back at it with another The Rich Life video, this time on Jeff Bezos. Now you guys requested this video in the comments from our Elon Musk The Rich Life video, so of course we got to work on getting her done for you ASAP. Now this show, it works off suggestions from you guys, so be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below. Also, let us know what you think of these new thumbnails. That's right, I did it myself. Now, if you're rich like Mr. Jeff Bezos, well, you can also support this channel. You can become a channel member or you can visit our Patreon. There are links down below. All right, now let's get into this video. Jeff Bezos was born on January 12, 1964 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The town made famous by Breaking Bad and the house with a pizza still on its roof, I think. When he was born, his mother, Jacqueline Geis Jorgensen, she was a teenage high school student, and his biological father, Ted Jorgensen, well, he didn't stay in the picture for long. Four years later, his mother remarried Mike Bezos, a Cuban immigrant who had come to America on his own at 16 in search of the American dream. Now, the family, they eventually moved to Miami, but Jeff, he wasn't interested in going to the clubs or to the beach. Now, a young Jeff Bezos, he was a massive Star Trek fan, and he had an early love for computers. Now, he even started his first business back in high school known as the Dream Institute, which was an educational summer camp for kids. 
You were nerdy. I was nerdy. <laughs> that hasn't changed, by the way. <laughs> now, as I mentioned in the intro, he was also McLovin' it flipping burgers, but they wouldn't allow him to serve the food because he had too much acne. Now, he was the valedictorian of his graduating class, and he went to study computer science and electrical engineering at Princeton University. After graduation, he worked on Wall Street, and in 1990, he became the youngest senior vice president at the investment firm D.E. Shaw. Now, seeing the explosive opportunity of the internet, well, he quit his job four years later, and he moved to Seattle, opening an online bookstore in his garage. Three years ago, I was in New York City working for a quantitative hedge fund when I came across the startling statistic that web usage was growing at 2,300% a year. So I decided I would try and find a business plan that made sense in the context of that growth. To give you a better sense of what was going on back in 1994 when he first started Amazon, well at the movie theaters you could catch films that include Dumb and Dumber, Goodfellas, Interview with the Vampire, and The Shawshank Redemption. Now with such good movies out at the theaters, who the hell would want to buy a book? But the man, he had a plan. And books were great as the first best, because books are incredibly unusual in one respect, and that is that there are more items in the book category than there are items in any other category by far. Apparently his parents, they were shocked that he would give up a cushy Wall Street job in order to sell books online, but eventually they came around and invested a quarter million dollars in the startup company, a stake that would be worth as much as $30 billion today. Now his adopted father, he certainly inherited his slice of the American dream. As for his biological father, Ted, well, he was working as a bicycle repairman until, well, his untimely passing happened just a few years ago. Yikes. Fellas, hold on to them kids. Getting back to the launch of Amazon, well, he released the site with no press promotion, and he was selling books across the United States and in 45 foreign countries, delivering them within 30 days. Two months later, well, the site it was pulling in $20,000 a week which was growing faster than Bezos had ever expected. Now Amazon had made its initial public offering in May of 1997, and since that day, the split adjusted stock price has increased nearly 90,000%. Now Bezos, he personally invested in Google in 1998, and his $1 million early investment would likely have made him a billionaire even without his extensive Amazon wealth. Now this allowed him to run the company without a profit for many years, just gearing up for future growth. Now, I've heard a lot about your desk. It's a door with mm -hmm. four by fours. Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can oh. afford a better desk than that. It's a symbol yeah. of spending money on things that matter to customers and not spending money on things that don't. And you don't need clean carpets. Then with the fear of other online retailers joining the market, well, Amazon began diversifying its offerings. This included CDs and videos in 1998, then later clothes, electronics, toys, and today, well, there's little you can't buy on the site. Amazon flourished with yearly sales that jumped from $510,000 in 1995 to over $17 billion in 2011. Since then, Jeff Bezos, he's diversified the Amazon portfolio. He bought up other businesses like Zappos for $1.2 billion in 2009, the Washington Post in 2013 for 250 mil, Twitch for just under a billion in 2014, and Whole Foods in 2017 for $13.7 billion. So the guy's making some serious bank when you throw around that kind of coin, you know what I mean? All right, now that we know that he's rich rich, let's take a look at what he spends his fortune on. Let's kick things off with his most recent purchase of an $80 million three-story penthouse apartment located at 212 Fifth Avenue in Midtown Manhattan. Then just for the hell of it, he bought up the two units below him for the extra privacy. Or maybe it's for his entourage, or maybe it's for his Star Trek friends. Maybe he's got a whole bunch of Klingons down there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. The sprawling 10,000 square foot penthouse alone has five bedrooms, including a massive seven room master suite. The master bathroom has a priceless view of the Empire State Building from the master tub. The upper three floors, they offer two areas for entertaining with a wraparound terrace and epic views of the city that never sleeps. This is what we refer to as view envy. Now, Bezos had previously owned property in New York City dating back to 1999. This included three condominiums at 25 Central Park West, which I believe he gifted to his parents. 
All right, let's roll back the clock to uh, an earlier purchase from 1998 when he first made a family home for himself in Medina, Washington. He originally spent $10 million on one property, which include five bedrooms and four bathrooms and makes up 20,600 square feet. Then he later bought up a neighboring house with another five bedrooms and four bathrooms and another 8,300 square feet. He then invested $23 million into renovations in 2010, and in total, it sits on 5.35 acres of land with 200 yards of private shoreline. There's also a boathouse, and it's estimated to be worth $70 million. Now, don't get too excited that you could just pop by for a visit. This property is gated, so you're better off trying to like knock on the door of one of his neighbors. Maybe try Bill Gates. We all know he lives around the corner, and that guy is a party dude who never stops. Now, just like in Medina, well, Bezos, he has two properties in Beverly Hills right next to each other. Now, the first is a Spanish-style property he picked up back in 2007 for $24.45 million. This one includes a greenhouse, a tennis court, a huge swimming pool, four fountains, and a six-car garage. There's also plenty of celebrity neighbors. So, you know, that's a perk. Then 10 years later, well, he bought the neighbors again. Now, I don't know why Jeff Bezos keeps buying up his neighbors' homes. The second one here cost him $12.9 million. I'm not sure really what it is. I do know that when me and Kara, we get into a fight, I gotta sleep on the couch. So maybe Bezos, he just likes the comfort of knowing that, well, he can sleep next door in a mansion if he forgets to take out the trash. You know what I mean? Jeff Bezos also owns a 30,000 acre ranch outside of Van Horn, Texas, which includes a bunker that sleeps 12. Now the property, it's also the base for Bezos' private space company, Blue Origin, which is something we'll talk more about in just a minute. Six, five, four, command engine start, two, one. Engine is running, entering boost mode. Now we also bought a former textile museum in Washington, D.C. for 23 million. Now it's actually two joint properties merged together and is 27,000 square feet. It's actually the largest home in the nation's capital. Now with the exception of Florida, it looks like Jeff Bezos, he has a mansion to call home in all four corners of the United States. But even when he's traveling, will the dude, he be living good. I mean, check out his private jet. This is the Gulfstream G650ER. It's the same one owned by Elon Musk and it seats between eight to 13 passengers. Now, of course, this is just for his own personal use, but Amazon Prime Air, they recently invested 1.5 billion into building a new shipping hub out in Kentucky, and they currently have at least 20 cargo planes in the sky, and they have plans to have a total of 70 by 2021. That's so you guys get your packages on time. He's not only taking up all the land, he's taking up the sky as well. Now on the ground, Jeff Bezos' collection of cars is valued at over $20 million. And that's only the ones we know about. The Ferrari Pininfarina Sergio is valued at $3 million. The Bugatti Veyron Mansory is valued at $3.4 million. A W Motors Lycan Hypersport, it's another 4 mil. There's a Koenigsegg CCXR Trevita at $4.8 million. And the Lamborghini Veneno, it costs a cool $5 million. Now these are cool now, but for the future, Bezos is actually investing heavily in self-driving tech startups which could eventually, you know, help Amazon get you faster and cheaper deliveries. Yeah, he's really speeding up the process on everything. All right, let's talk about his company, Blue Origin, which wants to bring you to space. Now, he's actually been working on this business since 2000, which is two years before Elon Musk, he got in on the action. Now, right now, he's working on reusable rockets to give tourists an opportunity to visit space, but he's got bigger plans than that, which include trips to the moon. We're talking civilizations that exist, like floating in outer space. And essentially, he wants to make the movies and the TV shows from Star Trek, well, a reality. Speak normally. And, uh, well, I got a feeling he can do it. I mean, a dude that survived a divorce that cost him $36 billion, well, he's still laughing. So if he can do that, well, he can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? With that kind of attitude, that man can accomplish anything he puts his mind to. As for the rest of the story, well, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here because this is the rich life. Now, you guys got to let me know who to document next in the comments down below. And that uh, we could make a versus video on Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Might be an interesting one. But you let us know what's next. You know where. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!